Thank you again for watching Carl and J-Man us be these guys. What's going on out there? So modern cooking. Modern cooking versus res cooking? Res cooking. What, what, what would, would, okay, what would you say that res cooking is? I think res cooking is taking ingredients and making it edible. Okay. <laughs> and then I think that <laughs> I think that modern cooking. Well, I mean, I, I guess you know, in the way that I've learned it, because I do both. Yeah. Of being the five star, five diamond chef, that you know, the training that I've received, that really the concept of uh, modern cooking or the pahana man's cooking is really about flavor. Yeah. It's yeah. about. Um, Dishes that is kind of similar to our traditional dishes, but dishes and cooking styles that have been around for centuries. So you on our podcast, we you, you say that you're a five star, five diamond chef, which in reality, which uh, he means that he cooked underneath somebody and <laughs> was like a was like a, a you know, a, a sweeper guy like in uh, Ratatouille pretty much. Which in reality meant that I, I serve the super wealthy. <laughs> but was never super wealthy myself. <laughs> which in reality that he only went to school for or that, and then never <laughs> pursued a dream. Went to school to be a servant. <laughs> so, I mean, like the the modern modern way of like how Hopi's cook today is not too far off of how um, the white man cooks now, right? To, in this day and age, in yeah. this day and yeah. age, because then you go to any Hopi home, you go into the kitchens, you'll find a lot of the same tools that you'd find in a, a non-native person's kitchen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Find, Frying pans, saucepans, knives, those types of things. And, and with that, I mean, like back in the day, like in my grandmother's day, yeah, you know, they they all they ate was what they grew mm -hmm. pretty much. A lot of corn. A lot of corn, beans. a lot of beans, squash, watermelon. A peaches. lot of ingredients that came from just around the village. Yeah. And and that's that's basically that was basically modern Hopi cooking. Game that was yeah. that lived around like, the village. Like um Bir birds, you talked about those birds you guys. Oh, hewies. Yeah, we got hewies. Rabbits, rabbits mm -hmm. you know, even uh, gophers. Oh yeah, I've gophers. That, you know, they used to eat gophers back then. Yeah, exactly. And and you know, like you had deer meat every now and then. Every now and then. Yeah, and it, it was it was where a food was only to be a survival tool for the purpose of survival to be a yeah to to basically just nourish yourself for the next day mm -hmm. but but now i mean it's an art form now it's an art form mm -hmm. hopis love to cook now yeah yeah a lot of a lot of women like to do a lot of baking mm -hmm. all those corn ladies like to brag about all the bread <laughs> And pies and cakes that they were slaving over, but we really know that they were just on Facebook. And and they make very very good pies and bread. Rock hard. <laughs> no, they don't. So Sorry, some of their maize have no teeth. <laughs> so you you worked at where? Where where did you I, work? I at worked. Before? Well, the claim to fame that you know a lot of my bragging comes from is that I worked at the Kai restaurant. Yeah, which was at the. Um, Sheraton um, Wild Horse Pass Resort and Spa. Oh, really? And so to this day, the only five-star, five-diamond restaurant in the state of Arizona, which is as fancy as, as it gets. He just brings that up because he just worked there as a janitor. <laughs> I don't know. I was <laughs> pushing brooms and mopping the floor. It's not his title. It was just their title. So, <laughs> so we're going to actually take a road trip here in, in about, a, about a second or mm -hmm, two, mm -hmm. and we're actually going to go to his house. And he's actually going to cook me a gourmet meal. Carl laid down the challenge and said that, you know, you call yourself the five diamond, five <laughs> diamond chef all the time, but I've never seen you cook. Exactly. And so we're going to actually go to his house here in a minute here. So uh, we'll see you then. So we're in uh, J-Man's We're home, live on location. Home studio now. So we're <laughs> live on location. So this nice little kitchen here is his his workplace here. So 
The Rez Famous Wife's Kitchen, <laughs> to be exact. So he's today he's going to cook for us something special, I guess. Something special. Yeah, it's not going to just be like uh, like grits in a pan. Or, <laughs> it's not going to be hamburger helper. It's not going to be hamburger helper or anything like that. But what it's going to be, it's going to be one of a specialty that he knows how to cook. And I'm pretty sure that's pretty much mm-hmm. how he knows mm-hmm. how to cook. <laughs> Basically, rising to the challenge is that Carl made the statement that I call myself the five star five diamond chef and that I've never he's never seen me cook anything so I'm gonna cook a dish that I used to cook up at the five star five diamond restaurant up at Kai and so we're gonna do a grilled um what the hell is it called (laughs) (laughs) so he's gonna grill something for us something (laughs) it's gonna be a grilled butternut squash soup yeah so get ready and we're gonna go ahead and start on what he's gonna do so we're gonna use butternut squash and butternut squash is traditionally in the eyes of the white man's kitchen is a winter squash and so you think about the different varieties of squash that um, when you're making a soup like this that you want to use something that's a little bit more um, I guess harder one of the harder squashes like a butternut squash you could probably use an acorn squash to do this and there's other types of squashes that we have right Carl on, on our Hopi Inn we as we as organic farmers I guess you could say so we're we're constantly growing different types of squash and so we use that in our everyday cooking how do you say squash in Hopi? Uh, Batna. So you can tell he doesn't know how to, <laughs> how to feel the It's been some here. time. Let's, let's see him start this thing up. There you go. Do the other way. No, so it works better. <laughs> it's funny to me because when you work in the kitchen, everything in the in the in the uh, commercial kitchens, everything's about time. And so when you're prepping your ingredients, prepping your mise, which is a term that's used often in the kitchen, mise en place, that you do it as fast as you can. And so I remember when I watched cooks peel, oops, peel things, that I was kind of amazed at how fast that they would peel things. Because when you think about your mom's or your so's peeling something, this is the speed that they would peel at. <laughs> That's uh, grandma speed. <laughs> but then for real chef speed, it's, you know, you're going as fast as you can because you have to get it completed as quickly as possible. One of the things you learn is proper <laughs> tools. It looks like you don't know how to use your tool right there. <laughs> After we peel it and chop it up, we're going to quarter it and break it down into workable pieces. Clean out the seeds. Then we're going to oil them up, season, and then we're going to throw them on the grill. One of the rules of the kitchen to be successful as a cook is what they always tell you is a sharp mind and a sharp knife. Mm. And so you lack, you lack one of those. <laughs> I'm not going to say which one. You can you can guess. <laughs> and so we're going to quarter these bad boys and make them more manageable. Clean out the seeds. But if you if you try to grow this squash, then it's probably gonna come out like a banana or something. Like that. <laughs> you, you really don't know what you're gonna get. From yeah, ashes. it's like one of those. And so now that we got them quartered, that we're going to oil them up, get some seasonings on there, and then uh, throw them on the grill. <laughs> Oil them up, I just imagine like at a beach and... (laughs) And so I'm going to use vegetable oil, but you can use canola oil. Some people like to use um, EVO, extra... Extra Extra virgin. Extra virgin, but with that stuff, you got to be careful because once it burns, then you you taste the the burnt of the oil. oil. Yeah, and so you're just going to rub the oil all over it. (laughs) The oil helps to get the heat on the different areas of the vegetable and our goal but our goal is is to get that nice char because the char is what helps create flavor it's going to help create the smoky flavor and so let's do a little bit some more on the back side do the same thing rub it in like we're working at a massage parlor 
<laughs> and then when you're working in a commercial kitchen, the thing that you learn is that you always season as you go. So we're gonna get salt and pepper onto these guys. It'll help to bring out the flavor of the squash. Can we do it on both sides? Now we're ready to grill. So we got the grill going, nice and hot, nice charcoal grill. And you can use a gas grill if you'd prefer to use a gas grill, but the nice thing about the charcoal grill is it helps to bring out that smoky flavor, the charcoal flavor. And so we're just gonna drop each piece onto the grill, get it a nice char. And the goal of the grill isn't necessarily, necessarily to cook the squash all the way. What we really want to do is just to get that nice black char so that the flavor will go through. And then as we move along, we'll see where, um, how the squash gets cooked all the way through. All right. Let that close. We'll come back in 10 minutes. So now we're going to prep something that's called a mirepoix. And what mirepoix is, it's carrots, celery, white onion. Sometimes people use uh, garlic for it too. Spell it. Spell it. <laughs> M-I-R-E-P-O-I-X. It's just, French. You just spell McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to cut up some carrots. I'll probably use a full carrot and a half. Maybe use up a little bit of the rest of this guy. That might be enough. And then we're gonna do about two celery stalks. Rinse this guy off real quick, get some of that dirt off. I used to hate celery when I was growing up. Oh, really? Yeah. It tasted nasty. My mom used to put peanut butter on it. Oh, really? Yeah. During uh, remember those, Thanksgiving. Uh, remember those celery celery logs or the ants on the log? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the, that's what you used to eat, huh? Yeah, that's what, that's what uh, adults used to make eat, kids eat, so to eat healthy. If you put ants on there. <laughs> then the kids are going to want to eat it. <laughs> kids like to eat ants. And so you want a good ratio of equal parts celery, equal parts carrot. So that's probably too healthy. And I already cut an onion. Then you're probably gonna do maybe about a tablespoon of oil again into a pan. And this is a rule that you follow in the Pahana kitchen, but it's a rule obviously not followed out here on the reservation, is that you always start with a hot pan. And because I know that out here, the way that we normally cook is that you put the food in first, then you turn the oven on. But with this type of cooking, you start with the hot pan so you can see the oil kind of moving around, that the bottom's gonna get hot and that really helps with the cooking process when the pan is hot to start with. It was very close. I not need the rest of that. And then we're gonna throw a couple of cloves of garlic in there, yeah, for additional flavor. I see your, uh, I see your knocked down a notch of a <laughs> star because they burn yourself. It's uh, a, <laughs> it's a, uh, getting back on the bike again, and I <laughs> fell off. You just got knocked down. Now you have to call yourself like the four star general. Yep. Whatever you call yourself. Okay, we are here in the kitchen, as you can see. I'll see. I'll see if I can zoom in here. We are looking at the elusive Hopi man <laughs> trying to cook. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Everybody out here orders from McDonald's. And I never seen this happen before. Shh, we gotta we gotta hide. I think he's gonna look. I think I think he's gonna Okay. Got the aromatics working. And this is gonna add an additional layer to the soup. Uh -huh. And I think that mirepoix is the base for any type of soup like this. And so we got that in there. And then you just kind of keep it going. 
smell that, Carl. Can you smell that? Yeah, it smells like garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I think it smells yummy. And so that's working. Um, and then that probably means that our uh, squash is ready. And then so our squash is ready and you can see that it has this nice char on both sides. And so a lot of people, sometimes they think that that's burnt. What this actually is, is it's flavored. And so this flavor, this, this part of the squash that's nice and charred, that's gonna give it that smoky flavor. Ah, so my sisters all flavor their food like that. <laughs> so all the coyote girls out there, the, you know, that's okay, you're adding flavor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then so we got the mirror paw working, we got our squash, and what I'm gonna add is a dried uh, chili pod. And so the dried chili pod is gonna add additional layer of flavor. And so here, we're all about flavor. And so once this stuff gets worked to a pretty good degree, this process is something that they call sweating. And what sweating does is it bring, extracts all of the oils out of the different vegetables and extracting those oils is the flavor coming up. And then so we're gonna add the squash to the mirepoix. And then so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add chicken, chicken broth. And we're gonna add enough to where the squash is completely submerged. And so I think that the big contrast between the Bahana Man's kitchen and cooking on the res is that normally out here on the res when you're cooking stews or soups, oftentimes you have people using water. But in the Bahana Man's kitchen, water is seen as something that dilutes flavor, takes flavor out. And so we're always using things like chicken stock or broth because then that's gonna add flavor to whatever it is that you're cooking. And so we're gonna let this go probably for about 20 minutes. And once this cooks through, then we'll go on to the next process. We got it on a nice low simmer. Let nice low simmers good for temperature control ensures that it's got enough heat that it's cooking, but also ensures that it um, not too hot to where you're gonna burn stuff. And so the squash is ready. And the way you tell that the squash is ready is you take your tongs and you can see that it's really easy to break apart. And so that's how you know when the squash is ready. And so we're gonna take this and then we're gonna puree this bad boy. Cool. And so my goal is to not make this explode <laughs> and you, get everywhere, so. You don't have a lid to that thing? No, this has no lid. So that should be good. And then once it's nice and blended, what we're gonna do, that's kind of an important process when it comes to these types of recipes is straining it. And so we're gonna strain it through a fine strainer that has the mesh. And in all reality, you could skip this step because technically everything that's in here is edible. But the fact that when we run it through the strainers that you wanna get as smooth a texture as possible. And so getting that smooth texture is where the straining through this fine mesh comes into play. And so we're straining the rest of the soup. And as I mentioned before, this is a step that you could completely omit because technically everything in this is edible, but really what we want is we want the clear and smooth of the soup. And that's what makes it five stars. <laughs> So basically, it's like old people food. You don't want to have it. Uh, they don't we, want to be crunchy. We don't want Kua breaking his teeth again. So. <laughs> you just want it pureed. Yeah, and so unfortunately, you know, because of the five diamond cooking, you do end up um, with a lot of access of food that you don't essentially use. And so that's the case with this. But the name of the game and the purpose of the straining is the texture. And so that's done. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this out. Next thing to do, we need citrus. Okay. Some acidity. And so 
in when you're constructing a dish, an unknown flavor at, around these parts is acid. And so sometimes you get a lot of acid from um, citrus fruits, limes, lemons, oranges, grapefruit. Another good place too to get acidity is from uh, vinegar. Yeah. And so what the acidity does is that it adds an additional layer of flavor and so it gets that pucker and so it'll help to put this together and the other thing that we need is cream make sure that this guy's all dry get all the water's out because if you remember what i said prior that a lot of people see water in these professional kitchens is diluting the flavor mm. and this usually, is usually bootleggers dilute their flavor <laughs> to make more money you didn't hear it from me, though. And so this is the part of the soup that's strained. And we're going to, what they call, we're going to finish it. Okay. So we'll get it on a nice, good setting. A little bit of soup. Now we're going to add citrus. Probably do about four of these. Mm. It's like you never wash your hands in this, in this section <laughs> here, so. We don't wash our hands. <laughs> uh, secret restaurant trick. <laughs> and the joke's on Carl, because he's going to eat this, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll opt out on this this batch. <laughs> yeah, give, give me the batch where you wore gloves. Give me the batch where you wore gloves in that. <laughs> and we'll do one more just for extra measure. All right. And then we're gonna add, Carl, cream. Some cream. And that's gonna give it some body. So that's what I wanted. And so this is gonna give it that silky texture. Uh huh. And the other thing that we're gonna add is seasonings. Okay. Salt, pepper. You can see that after I added the cream, that it changed the color of it a little bit. We added the citrus, we added some salt and pepper, and we got it to the right um, flavor that we wanted. And so pretty much it's done. Nice. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it back into the pot. Right. And you can see how smooth that is. There's no impurities in it. It's like milk. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is that we're going to, uh, we're gonna heat this back up so okay. that I can get it up to a good temperature to uh, impress Carl. <laughs> and then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna saute some mushrooms. Okay, cool. And so the mushrooms are just gonna be kind of an added addition to the soup. So it's not just the soup that we're going to eat. So, And so in the restaurant, normally we use, uh, maitake mushrooms but obviously you're not going to find maitakes in batches to the city <laughs> so we're just going to use regular button mushrooms right. and that should uh, provide the same thing and same thing you always start with a hot pan yeah got the oil nice and loose in there once that gets up to temp and the other thing, too, about cooking on the reservation that's different from cooking on a professional kitchen, kitchen is that in a professional kitchen, you actually use the different numbers on an <laughs> oven. I watch some of my sisters cook, and for them, it's, there's only one temp that they use, and that's high. <laughs> and that'll get a nice sizzle on it. And then mushrooms are the same concept. Toss those up a little bit. Salt and pepper, some seasoning. That's it, huh? Salt yeah. And, pepper. and so the mushrooms are just about done cooking. The finishing touches, anytime that you cook mushrooms, is our good friend, butter. <laughs> yeah, Hokies love butter too. So. And so we're gonna take just a smidge of this. Oh, that's not, that's uh... And then what this does is that it, it adds flavor. Paula Dean would say, just add the whole stick. <laughs> it's going to clog some arteries. <laughs> but just to ensure that we got enough, a little bit more of that. And so when you're truly in the kitchen too, sometimes for mushrooms, you'll add just a dabble of that, some oh, stock. stock. And then it emulsifies and it creates this juice uh -huh. of butter and stock that the mushrooms cook in. 
Just adding more flavor, almost like the sauce within it. Yeah. And so that's uh, restroom style mushrooms. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and taste uh, the cooking here. So these are the mushrooms that yeah. we cooked. And so these are just going to sit uh -huh. at the center of the bowl. And this, this is just to add some additional, um, I don't know what you call it. A flavor. A accoutrement. Accoutrement. Uh, so we're going to get a couple of mushrooms down there sitting in the- Spell that one. <laughs> sitting in the uh, bowl. All right. And then this is then, the main and then thing. The, and then so he's going to show, he's going to pour in some of the, the soup, the old man soup here. <laughs> so I'm going to- And so this is going to be smooth. I wish I had a better thing to serve this in, but we're just going to, we're just going to dump it in. All right. So he's going to- Let me make sure this is all nice and mixed real quick. So he's going to- Make sure that nice and smooth, nice good texture. All right. Remember, this is smoked, grilled butternut squash. Butternut soup. squash. Is there like a proper way of eating this, or just, just dig in, dig in, dig in and stuff? And then so, uh, explain the ingredients one more time. Butternut squash. Okay. Uh, the mirepoix that you made me spell like ten okay. times, which consists of. Uh, celery, carrots, uh, yellow onion, garlic, yeah. and then there's a, a dry chili in there as well. Okay. Lime juice, some cream, lots of salt, lots of pepper. All right, so. Lots of goodness. We'll, we'll, we'll taste it for the first time. We'll see if this if this is a- uh, If I deserve the moniker, deserve the five the star, five star, star here. Oh, wow. Mm. Describe the Describe what you're tasting okay, for our so, viewers at home. All right. So what I'm tasting is I'm tasting this soup that has some sort of zestiness mm -hmm. from the citrus, from the citrus, and it has like a chilliness where it's like hits you right there, like that flavor bomb mm -hmm. that just ha that happens, and then uh, topped off with like the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. The mushrooms give it a little bit extra texture, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're tasting more than just squash. Oh right? yeah, I'm tasting more than just squash. But you taste the squash. Mm -hmm. It's like. It's like nothing that I have ever tasted before. So old people that really like this stuff, <laughs> I think you got some here. <laughs> and how I made this for you is exactly how I've been making this during my time working up at Kai, the five star five diamond restaurant at the Church and Wild Horse Pass Resort and Spa. Mm. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you again for this lovely soup. And, you know, thank you for the family that, that hosted here. And, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and go back to the studio and wrap things up. We're, we're, so back, you, in, we're, we're back in the, the studio. Oh, my God. It was, I guess. I, it was so yummy. I, I hate to admit it, but that was actually pretty good. I mean, all the culinary stuff that you see on Martha Stewart living, you know. <laughs> that's, li living on the reservation. <laughs> It, I mean, that that was actually pretty good. I have to say that was really, really well done. Thank you, thank you. I mean, you know, your wife was lovely. Mm -hmm. You know, your 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 home is lovely, mm -hmm. and 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 I, I have to thank them for you know helping you and helping us oh, with, sure. with everything Definitely. like that. Definitely. And, and so, I mean, <laughs> now the Res famous wife's gonna expect me to do all the cooking now. So I kind of just. <laughs> Left myself with that, but you're welcome, Carl. Well, thank you, thank you for that, and I, I enjoyed that meal. I very much enjoyed that meal, although uh, could have used a little bit more salt. <laughs> no one has ever said that to me before. <laughs> In so, anything that I've ever made. So actually, we are, we're actually selling some T-shirts now, which is out available now, which is uh, through... At carlandjman.bigcartel.com. So if you want to have Soul Links Thinks... Links are in the bottom. So if you want to if you want to see Carl or uh, Soul Thinks, some still cool. I think that's what it says. <laughs> I don't know. Go to, go to the website or go to Facebook, and there's going to be links there. We'll actually put a link down below uh, for you guys there, too. And uh, if you if you haven't seen 
our latest episode, click these episodes here for our, our past episodes uh, and make sure that you listen to our podcast, Carl and uh, J-Man Save the World podcast. It's available every week on Wednesdays. So go check that out. All links are down below. Smash that like icon. Subscribe to our to our YouTube, YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel. We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers. Yeah, try to get that thousand subscriber there. We're about hundred and some odd uh, subscribers now. So tell your friends that by five. Yeah. So go ahead and just create more uh, YouTube accounts and just keep on <laughs> <laughs> keep on doing that. Keep on subscribing. So thank you again for watching, Carl and J Man. Uh, us be these guys. My name is Carl, and this is my best friend, J Man. Hey out there, Carl and J-Man fans. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. And I'd like to ask you all out there a favor. I got a good buddy, Kevin Lewis of the Gila River Indian community, who's somebody that I met working at Kai, working my way up to be the five star, five diamond chef. And he's somebody that I worked along with during my years at Kai. But unfortunately, my friend Kevin is going through uh, some rough times right now. He's got some uh, medical health issues. And so if you would like to learn more about Kevin and his plight, please click the link down in the descriptions below the GoFundMe page and uh, consider helping him and his family out. He is definitely a great representation of native folks within fine dining. Thank you. Kwa kwa.